I've been asked to look after my sister's child starting next week. I have finally entered my second trimester and was beginning to feel some ease. Suddenly, my husband came up with an outrageous idea. Take care of your sister-in-law's child. I'm pregnant, remember? I protested. Despite my objections, my husband insisted, you're in your second trimester, aren't you? From the start, he seemed all too ready to push everything onto me for the sake of our child. I couldn't take it anymore. That's when I decided to call a certain person. My name is Anna, 28 years old. It's been almost three years since I married my husband, Max. Right now, I'm pregnant with our long-awaited first child. As soon as I found out I was pregnant, I quit my job and became a full-time homemaker. I had initially planned to work until maternity leave, but the severity of my morning sickness made me give up. Thinking that taking irregular days off would be an inconvenience to my employer, I resigned, albeit reluctantly. Last week, I finally entered my second trimester. My morning sickness, which had been unbearable, had significantly improved, and I could eat to a certain extent. I thought I could finally have a peaceful pregnancy. That's what I believed. Then one day, as I was preparing dinner, my husband received a phone call. With a grimace on his face, he weakly responded, What? Starting next week. So suddenly? Uh, yeah, I suppose. Okay, got it. He seemed deeply troubled. After he hung up, he dropped his shoulders and let out a heavy sigh. Seriously, what's wrong? Who was that? I asked. It was my sister, he replied. Your sister? What about her? I questioned. We're going to be looking after my sister's child starting next week, he said. What? So that's why we're taking care of them. Hold on a minute, what are you saying all of a sudden? I exclaimed. Summer break starts next week, right? My sister said she needs some peace and quiet. Could you take care of the kids? He made it sound like it was no big deal, which was infuriating. Anger bubbled up inside me as I faced him. Hey, I'm pregnant, you know. Do you understand that? And your sister's kids, they're three boys, right? I said. Yeah, I know, but you're in your second trimester, aren't you? He replied. Is he serious? I thought, the second trimester just means some of the early worries have lessened. It doesn't mean I can do everything without worry now. His words irked me, and I blurted out my feelings. I don't care about being in my second trimester. Being pregnant means my condition is different than usual. There's no way I can take care of your sister's kids in this state, I said. Well, what can we do? She said it wouldn't be a lot of trouble, he said. So you're going to ignore how I feel. How can you just say okay on your own? I asked, frustrated. Ah, you're so annoying. Think of it as a parenting rehearsal, he said. A rehearsal? One elementary school student and two preschoolers. You think I can take care of three rambunctious boys right now? I questioned. Cornered by my harsh questions, Max could only look down, guilty. When will this end? I asked. The duration is uh, about two weeks, he replied. Two weeks? That's way too long. Are you out of your mind? I exclaimed. She's the one who said it. What can I do? If you have any complaints, tell her, not me, he said. You keep saying my sister this, my sister that. Don't you have your own opinion, Max? Are you going to prioritize your sister's demands over your pregnant wife? I asked. Well, I can't help it. She's scary when she's mad, he said. What kind of reason is that? I thought. Max has an older sister, Annie, who is five years older. Despite being almost 30, Max seems to be completely under her thumb. It must be the age difference as well as Annie's strong personality. He always prioritizes her wishes first, every time. I heard about it and couldn't help but feel pathetic. Up until now, I would have just resigned myself, thinking, well, it's just the usual, can't help it. But the circumstances are different now. If anything happens to the baby in my belly, I'll regret it for the rest of my life. This time, I have to prevent it at all costs. With a firm resolve, I confronted Max. Please tell any no. But it's already decided, he said. I don't care. What if something happens to the baby? Can you take responsibility? Why does it have to be like this? Consider my position too. I objected. Don't joke with me. If you're so insistent, Anna, you should tell Annie yourself. I can't do it, Max replied, locking himself in his room as if to escape. What's with that attitude? Prioritizing his sister over his pregnant wife? Can such a thing even happen? Anyway, I have to refuse Annie as soon as possible. I immediately tried to call Annie, but there was no sign of her answering. Why wasn't she picking up? Annie, who knows my strong-willed nature, probably thinks it's a done deal once the kids arrive here. Despite calling numerous times afterward, 
Annie never answered the phone. She herself has been pregnant and given birth to three kids. Why doesn't she understand my feelings? Despite this, how can she think it's okay to hoist her children on me, a pregnant woman, for two whole weeks? I could not understand her mindset at all. There's another reason I'm so resistant. I've actually taken care of Annie's three sons before. Even though I was taking care of them with my mother-in-law, it was really tough. They ran around the house, shrieked, and threw food everywhere. Even when I wasn't pregnant, it was tremendously challenging to take care of them. There's no way I could handle them in my current state. In fact, my sister-in-law's children are probably even more energetic than they were before. The mere thought filled me with dread. The next day, and the day after that, I repeatedly negotiated with Max. Please, can you tell your sister that we can't watch the kids? But if you're so bothered, why don't you just tell her yourself? He said. I tried calling her, but she doesn't pick up. She's clearly avoiding my calls on purpose, I explained. How am I supposed to know? Max replied nonchalantly. What do you mean, how am I supposed to know? What am I supposed to do if she won't answer the phone? That's why I'm asking you, Max, to talk to her for me, I pleaded. You're being too persistent. It's already been decided that we're watching them. Just accept it, he said dismissively. That's nonsense, I thought. In the end, my husband never got in touch with his sister and the day the kids were due to arrive kept getting closer. Two days before the children were to arrive when my husband came home from work. I confronted him again. You've given up on declining your sister's request to watch the kids, so naturally, you're going to take time off work to help, right? His face went white. What? Why me? I have work. I don't want to hear about work. Were you planning to leave me alone with three kids all along? But I have no choice. If I don't work, we can't make a living, and I can't just take a sudden leave of absence. Oh really? So you plan to dump everything on me from the start? Well, that is. Never mind. Keep on doing whatever your sister tells you to. I sharply dismissed him. He clicked his tongue in dissatisfaction. In that moment, my anger surged like a flame. How dare he act that way? This whole situation started because he didn't firmly decline in the first place. I couldn't stand it anymore. I wasn't going to be manipulated any longer. I immediately decided to return to my parents' house. I dialed my mom's number. Hello, mom. It's me. Oh my, it's been a while. What's up? Well, actually, I narrated the events of the past few days. My mom's reaction was unexpected. I see, but no, you can't come back here, my mom said. What? Why not? I'm really stressed out with what's happening right now, I replied, feeling a mix of frustration and desperation. It's okay. I'm not saying you should handle it all by yourself. I'll come to you. What? What do you mean by I'll come to you? I asked, surprised. I'll come there and straighten out Max and those kids. Any husband who can't take care of his pregnant wife isn't worth a dime. We need to fix his attitude now. But mom, before I could finish my sentence, she cheerfully reassured me. It's okay. I won't let you down. Just leave the rest to me. Ah, uh, okay. All right, I'll be there the day after tomorrow. And just like that, the call ended. Although I was worried, the idea of my mom coming over was reassuring. Two days later came sooner than expected. At the crack of dawn, at 6 o'clock a.m., my sister-in-law left her three boys with us. Woken by the loud voices of the children, I stumbled out of bed. I let them into the house, but it didn't take long for them to start arguing. Hey, this is my game. Don't touch it. Brother hit me. Auntie, I'm hungry. It was like a war zone. All this in just one hour of their arrival. How could the arguments start so quickly? Just then, my husband, woken by the noise, came out of our bedroom. Okay, take care of the rest, he said. Wait a second, you're still going to dump this situation on me? I don't have a choice, do I? I have work, he replied. This isn't a joke. I was about to shout at him when the doorbell rang. I'll get it, he said, heading for the door as if escaping. Ah, yes. Who is, huh? Long time no see, Max, said my mother-in-law. Saved. Mother has arrived, I thought, feeling a wave of relief. Max seemed confused at the sight of my mother. Why? Why is my mother-in-law here? Why do you think you are not only neglecting Anna, who is pregnant, but also accepting your sister's children without thinking? Ah, oh, well, anyway, it doesn't matter. I'll be taking care of the kids for the next two weeks, is that right? She said, eyes narrowing at Max. You are about to become a father, Max. I won't allow you to just stand by and watch. 
At mother's words, Max hastily shouted, Wait a minute, I have work, and if mother-in-law is here, Anna will surely feel relieved. What are you talking about? So if I go home right now, you will take a leave from work and take care of everything. Well, ah, uh, that is. Listen, I'm not asking for two weeks. Just take a week off on paid leave. What? Paid leave for a whole week? Of course, you are the one who let your sister dictate to you, or would you prefer that I take Anna home with me right now? No, 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 that would be a problem. Okay, I understand. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take a week of paid leave. And so, Max ended up taking a week of paid leave and was tasked with helping mother take care of the children. Can you boys introduce yourselves? Mother asked the three boys. They started shouting in response. Who the hell is this old hack? So annoying. Annoying. Okay, let's start with learning some manners, shall we? I'll be keeping this game of yours. Hey, give it back. Not speaking very nicely, are you? Well, I'll be treating you appropriately then. With a hard glare from mother, the children let out a small squeak. It's quite something, you know, even if I do say so myself. When my mother gets angry, she is terrifying. She turns into someone so fierce you can hardly believe it's the same woman with her normally gentle expression. Plus my mom used to be an elementary school teacher. There's hardly a better person for handling children. Throughout this time, my mother didn't hesitate to discipline the unruly kids. She made sure they were in bed by 9 p.m. and got them up at 7 a.m. While they were at our place, she set a limit of one hour of video games per day. Two weeks later, I was worried about what would happen, but everything went smoothly. Even the kids who initially disliked my mother gradually started listening to her. We were supposed to send the kids back to my sister-in-law's house that day, but my mother had other plans. Max, I'm taking the kids to your parents' house. What? Max replied, surprised. And please invite your sister-in-law to meet us there too. Is that okay? Ah uh, yeah, yes. Understood. In those two weeks, my husband had been entirely reformed by my mother, becoming a more dependable man than before. Max contacted his sister and changed the meeting place to his parents' house. We all headed there together. As soon as we arrived, my sister-in-law, Annie, approached Max with a displeased expression. Max, why on earth are we at your parents' house? I told you to bring them to my place. Well, uh, my mother-in-law suggested. What? Mother-in-law? Whoa. Annie began to raise her voice, but my mother greeted her with a bright smile. Nice to meet you. Who are you? I'm Anna's mother. I heard that my daughter has been helping you out. Oh, hello, Anna's mother. Nice to meet you, Annie said, trying to regain her composure. Why would you dump three boys on a pregnant woman for two weeks? What on earth were you thinking? What? Annie stammered as my mother, who had tried to keep things peaceful, began to directly question her. Even my mother-in-law, who didn't know the full story, joined in confronting Annie. Hey Annie, what the hell is going on? You left the kids with Anna. Is that true? Uh, that is? Do you know Anna is pregnant? Are you aware? No. It's not like that. I just asked Max for a favor. I didn't force it on Anna. Annie desperately made excuses. Unable to bear this sight, my mother quietly interrupted the conversation. Could you stop this unseemly arguing? Annie, you've experienced pregnancy, right? You understand that even during the second trimester, you can't let your guard down, correct? Well, uh, yes, but... And your child doesn't even know how to hold a pencil, my mother added pointedly. Annie fell silent, her previous confidence evaporating. The room grew quiet as everyone absorbed my mother's words. Finally, Annie looked down, unable to meet anyone's gaze. It was clear she understood the gravity of her actions. I can't believe they can't even show appreciation for a meal. What kind of education are you providing? Um, well, Annie stammered. I corrected all the points I noticed, but that wasn't for you. It was for the kids. If they continue as they are, they will suffer. I did it for them. Please don't misunderstand that. Annie's face gradually turned pale, and she eventually fell silent. My mother-in-law, who had been listening to the conversation, turned bright red and apologized to my mother. I'm sorry. Even after that, my mother continued to talk about how she had been disciplining the children with all her might for the past two weeks. She took the opportunity to criticize Annie's parenting and even subtly criticized my mother-in-law's way of raising her daughter Annie. By the time my mother finished speaking, both my mother-in-law and Annie were completely exhausted. I'm truly sorry, they both said, bowing deeply to my mother. After that, it seems that Annie was severely scolded by my mother-in-law. 
What's wrong with you? Because of you, I was humiliated. But I just wanted a break. There's a limit, you know. Forcing your kids on pregnant Anna for two weeks. That's insane. Oh, I'm sorry. I won't do it again. And he said, crying loudly and repeatedly bowing her head. By my mother-in-law's order, Annie was strictly forbidden from leaving the children at our house in the future. Ever since then, my husband has become much more reliable. It's probably thanks to my mother, but I also feel a change in his attitude. Anna, I'm really sorry. I didn't realize that housework and child rearing were so hard. It's okay. I'm glad that you understand. I won't be swayed by my sister anymore. From now on, I will prioritize you, Anna, and act accordingly. You may not trust me right away, but I want you to watch me as I strive to be a good husband and a good father. Thank you, Max. It's okay now, with him as he is now, I'm sure we can build a happy family. Looking at him, who was staring straight at me, I was convinced of that. After that, we welcomed a healthy baby. My husband has become very fond of children, and he is taking paternity leave to take care of them earnestly. All of this is thanks to my mother's teachings. 